Thank you very much, uh, dear chairpersons, uh, dear colleagues. It's a great pleasure to be here again this year, and I would like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to uh, give this talk. Um, I would like to talk uh, about uh, giving an update on the management of triple negative breast cancer and summarize to you the recent uh, advancements. Uh, I think anybody who gives this talk, you must have seen that they uh, show the slides, so I'm doing this as well. Uh, just to pointing out that triple negative breast cancer is not one disease. It's a very heterogeneous disease, and uh, I think we are now just uh, realizing the, the tip of the iceberg. But very um, uh, at this point, what we know based on Lehman's study is that there are different subtypes of uh, triple negative breast cancer uh, with basal-like one, for example, uh, that m involves more cell cycle and DNA repair proliferation genes, um, basal-like uh, two that involves more growth factor um, uh, related genes, uh, immune uh, uh, modulated uh, subtype, uh, the mesenchymal subtype uh, that deals with uh, genes related to cell uh, motility and uh, mesenchymal stem cell like, as well as the maybe a little bit more better prognostic androgen receptor that is uh, the, the luminal type. Uh, just very briefly, uh, about 15% of breast cancers are triple negative. We, based on studies, see a higher incidence, a little bit more, in African-American and Hispanic women. Uh, we uh, also now know, based on several studies, including ours, that there is a higher uh, germline BRCA mutation rate in individuals with triple negative breast cancer, ranging anywhere between 11 and 37%. The etiologic risk factors are not really well known, except, of course, for BRC1 mutation carriers who are at higher risk. And there's some literature suggesting that in African-American females not having breastfed, that the triple negative breast cancer risk is a little bit higher. We also know, and I will go into that in a little bit more detail, that uh, triple negative breast cancer actually tends to respond to standard therapy with anthracyclines and taxanes pretty well. The PCR rate is reported to be between 35 and 40 percent uh, to standard therapy. However, what we also see is that despite the good PCR rate, the overall and the disease for survival is much shorter. In fact, uh, this disease tends to relapse earlier within the first two to three years, and after first relapse, the time to death is shorter than other subtypes of breast cancer. And as mentioned, it's, it's a very heterogeneous disease, and right now we don't have any targeted therapies available in standard of care. So now we are left with um, clinical questions. Um, what is the optimum type of chemotherapy in the standard fashion that we can use for uh, triple negative breast cancer in the metastatic setting, in the neoadjuvant setting, and in the adjuvant setting? Um, the, the other question is, uh, how to approach patients with triple negative breast cancer who have germline BRCA mutations or who have what we call sporadic breast cancer, but they are, uh, who are BRCA-ness. Uh, is there any role for antiangiogenesis therapy? And also, um, what are the subtypes of triple negative breast cancer and the targets and uh, the targeted agents available? So I will try to review with you what we know so far um, in regards to this. And I would like to start with the first question. Uh, going over the data, we have um, what chemotherapeutic agents uh, are available currently. Um, so let's start with the anthracyclines. This is uh, not everything in the, in the literature because of the interest of time. But uh, the first study, for example, I've put here is a, a meta-analysis by D. Leo uh, looking in the adjuvant setting, uh, comparing anthracyclines versus CMF. And in the uh, triple negative breast cancer subgroup, there was a significant benefit from using anthracyclines uh, compared to CMF. So that is in line with what we see also with um, the uh, ER negative um, uh, breast cancers. One smaller study in the neoadjuvant setting looked at CEF only, just endocyclines only, and there was a PCR rate about 17%. So what we can say is I think that the endocyclines for triple negative breast cancer are, are doing well at this time and not at least inferior to um, uh, other subtypes, if anything, better. Um, uh, the relation between BRC and triple negative now is well known, though uh, when we 
uh, had published this paper, it was just the very beginning. And what we attempted to do is we wanted to characterize BRC-related breast cancer, so individuals with germline BRC mutations. And we've, what we found is that in BRC1 mutation carriers, there was a significant higher rate of triple negative breast cancer, 57% in our study, compared to 23% in BRC2 mutation carriers, and then in our tested negative non-carriers, about 14%, which is in lines with the literature. So uh, knowing this relation, uh, we wanted to, to know how these people do actually in terms of outcome. So we took um, uh, in a single institution a study all of our triple negative breast cancer who were tested for BRCA, and I wanted to see if uh, uh, individuals with mutations, with germline mutations versus who tested negative, did it differently. And when we looked at the disease free and overall survival of these patients, so our uh, nice surprise and um, also going in line with our hypothesis, uh, the patients did well. So what we concluded very uh, preliminary from this retrospective study, of course, is that um, at least at, uh, in, uh, at a single institution where patients are treated about the same way, that the outcome uh, in triple negative breast cancer with or without BRCA mutations is similar, saying that they are actually doing okay with the uh, current standard therapy. But the question is, how can we improve further? We took this question to another um, uh, modality also and wanted to see how our BRC positive patients, individuals with germline mutations, are responding to neadjuvant chemotherapy with anthracyclines and hexanes because we have not been uh, until recently treating them differently and wanted to know, are we doing well? So what we did is we took um, uh, patients who received neadjuvant chemotherapy at our institution who were referred for genetics evaluation who, on whom we did BRCA testing on, and on whom we have positive and negative results and identified about 25% positive a BRCA mutation rate. And uh, these patients, uh, the positives and negatives, were treated with standard of care regimens at our institution. Most of them, uh, close to 70%, 75%, with an anthracycline plus taxane, and then a minority with uh, anthracyclines only. And T only was really numerically about four or five patients that did not affect the analyses. Um, and because of the interest of time, I'm uh, going directly to the results, but in univert analyses, what we saw is that the complete pathologic response rate, so having no tumor in the breast as well as in the lymph nodes, in BRC1 germline mutation carriers was, was high, was 46%, versus in BRC negative patients, 22.4%, and that difference was statistically significant. We also looked at it in multivert analyses, um, so to eliminate uh, co-founding factors, for example, ER negativity. So they were independently predictive of having achieving a PCR in BRC1 mutation carriers. And of course, so the, the conclusion we draw from this was that, okay, we are doing fine in treating these BRC positive patients with our standard regimens, anthracyclines and taxanes. They are fine, they are doing good, but how can we further improve on their outcomes? And um, what, are, what is the role with PARP inhibitors and platinum? And I will come back to that in a minute. Uh, going back to the whole triple negative uh, group, um, I, uh, we, we also obviously um, uh, treat them with the taxanes, and the literature really supports that they are responding well. There are, uh, there's a meta-analysis looking at uh, several studies looking at taxanes versus anthracyclines or taxanes versus other agents in the metastatic setting uh, and uh, evaluating the triple negative subgroup when uh, available. And uh, we again see that they respond well to the taxanes. But I have to point out that not all of these studies included in meta-analyses are pure triple negative because um, in these older studies, Continue was not assessed, so they are certainly ER negative, and some of them are triple negative. And one example uh, of a more recent study is uh, the E2100, where patients with local recurrent or metastatic breast cancer um, were um, with Hertinue negative disease randomized to paclitaxel um, plus minus bevacizumab. And uh, when we look at the progression-free survival uh, in this group, there was a, about a 50% improvement in progression-free survival. And a, um, an analysis looking at hormone status uh, here, uh, for example, uh, compared to ER positive, we can see that the ERPR negative group actually uh, really favored the, the paclitaxel and the bevacizumab group. 
Uh, another study, again, uh, looking at the uh, taxanes, uh, evaluating, comparing paclitaxel versus nab paclitaxel in ixabepilone in the CLGB 4542 study, a randomized phase three study with first line uh, treatment uh, for locally recurrent or metastatic breast cancer, uh, plus bevosuzumab in all of these arms. Um, we see that uh, in the overall group, weekly paclitaxel is better than ixabepilone and has also a better uh, toxicity profile. But in the triple negative breast cancer subset, we see the same thing. It's very similar to the overall, eval uh, overall finding uh, that paclitaxel was better than ixabepilone in triple negative breast cancer. Um, uh, in subsequent lines, uh, other agents have been studied as well. Uh, uh, such as uh, eribulin uh, and capsidabine compared to each other uh, in this phase three study where patients uh, with um, locally advanced or metastatic breast cancer were randomized to eribulin versus capsidabine with having two primary endpoints being uh, progression-free survival and overall survival. And what we see here is that the overall survival in the whole group is actually not different, uh, significantly different for eribulin versus capsidabine. But when we look at some subgroup analyses, uh, especially in the about 290 triple negative breast cancer patients, we see that this patient population actually favors eribulin uh, rather than capecitabine. And uh, another study with eribulin was undertaken, the EMBRACE study, phase three, uh, that uh, is comparing eribulin to uh, other agents, treatment of physician choice, uh, with the primary endpoint being overall survival uh, and exploratory endpoints looking at hormonal status. And a study actually, a subsequent study, did a meta-analysis of these two studies, this one and the previous one I showed, um, of these two phase three studies, and, uh, and showed that uh, in the triple negative subgroup of these two cohorts, uh, eribulin was favored, so eribulin was a little bit more effective than capecitabine, or other drugs, physician of choice, in the triple negative subset. So now switching to, uh, again, the BRCA uh, story, um, obviously triple negative breast cancer patients uh, have a, a higher rate of BRCA mutations, as I mentioned, up to 30%, but the ones who don't have GAM9 mutations can also exhibit futures, what we call brca ness so they act uh, they share some clinical and molecular features with BRCA-associated cancers, including defective DNA repair, for example, methylation-induced silencing of BRCA, or mutations in other genes that encode proteins that, is, that are involved in uh, DNA repair. And this uh, is very uh, interesting because it gives us uh, an opportunity to evaluate DNA-damaging agents, not only in the germline mutation cares, but also in the BRCA-NES type of triple negative with platinums, for example, or uh, consider DNA repair inhibitors such as PARP inhibitors. So I would like to share some of the data uh, related to that. So uh, in platinums, for example, uh, there are in, in stage four studies, I have summarized some of them. The uh, response rate in the metastatic setting ranges anywhere between 10 to 30 percent, uh, being 10 percent with single agent, but up to uh, 30 percent uh, with the combination of gemcitabine carbo. Um, that is. Um, I run my study looking at gemcitabine carbo plus minus inipirib in uh, triple negative breast cancer. And in the gem carbo group, it's uh, 30%. So uh, it's a pretty good response rate. Um, in a triple negative breast cancer, there's also a study looking at cetuximab, single agent, EGFR inhibitor, uh, and after progression, uh, uh, moving on and followed by cetuximab plus carbo. And in that arm, the response rate was 17%. Um, and then there's another study looking at single agent, the TBCRC study. Again, uh, some high response rate. So uh, in terms of metastatic treatment of triple negative breast cancer, the platinums certainly have a role and they can be considered, but what line of therapy obviously is, is, is the question. And um, I want to here just uh, mention the very recent study that was presented a few weeks ago uh, at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium by Andrew Tutt uh, from the Institute of Cancer Research. It's a phase three carboplatinum versus docetaxel frontline metastatic breast cancer study in triple negative breast cancer patients with or without BRCA mutations. So in the study, patients were randomized to carboplatinum with an AUC of six or docetaxel at 100 milligrams per meter square, and then upon 
upon progression, they were actually allowed to cross over. And the beauty of this study is that it actually includes correlative science, which will, I think, give us a lot of information. They uh, obtained the initial primary cancer blocks for um, a CGH expression arrays and TMAs, but also when the patients relapsed, there were op optional biopsies to evaluate uh, that tissue as well and correlate with, with response or no response. Now, when we look at the, the study comparing carboplatin with docetaxel, we see that the docetaxel arm really had significantly more side effects, um, uh, such as fatigue, uh, obviously neuropathy, mucositis, uh, diarrhea, febrile neutropenia, and infections. And carboplatinum was just a little bit more worse than carboplatinum, uh, than docetaxel, in terms of nausea and vomiting, but in all other profiles, it actually um, did, did better. Uh, for the patient. Now, when we look at the overall uh, objective response rate, there was no statistically different. The um, response rate to carboplatinum was 31.4%, and for docetaxel, about 35.6%, and that was not different. The progression-free survival was not different. The overall survival was not different. Uh, however, they did an analysis looking at the BRC germline mutation carriers, though I have to say, amongst those uh, uh, patients, 300 or so patients, uh, 43 uh, patients at BRCA mutations, and we see a striking difference. The response rate for BRCA germline mutation carriers was 68% versus 33% for BRCA negative patients. So it appears that that uh, carboplatinum was significantly more effective in BRCA mutation carriers. Uh, they also attempted to look at the homologous recombination defect score, uh, which is becoming more and more in in trying to identify if we can predict response to certain agents, in especially the BRCA nest like uh, triple negative breast cancer patients. But unfortunately, there was really no relation with the HRD score, low or high, in terms of response to uh, either drug. Now, uh, platinums have been also studied in the neoadjuvant setting, and um, uh, there are, you know, several smaller studies, but also randomized uh, uh, studies, the randomized phase three study, the JAPAR-60, for example, with, with the addition of carbo to anticyclines and texanes increased the response rate from 43 to 57%, and uh, the GICAM, it's a randomized phase two study, uh, increased the, uh, the PCR was increased from 30 to 35 when carbo was added to anticyclines and texanes. And the CLGB-603, uh, is a, a very uh, recent study uh, that uh, showed significant improvement in PCR, and I would like to give you uh, the numbers a little bit more in detail. A forearm study looking at paclitaxel, uh, plus bevacizumab, or plus carbo, or the triple combination. And what we see here is that uh, in terms of PCR in the breast, uh, adding, car uh, adding carbo increased PCR from 46 to 60, adding BEV, Bevacizumab increased it from 48% uh, to 59% significant. And the same improvement, statistically significant, was also seen when PCR was defined, no tumor in the breast and axillary lymph node. Uh, in terms of toxicities, uh, when Bevacizumab was added uh, to the control arm, there was more hypertension. When carbo was added, there was more neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. And when, all, uh, uh, when Bevacizumab and carbo was added, uh, the side effects and the toxicity obviously increased significantly. So then, do we add carboplatin to every triple negative breast cancer patient? Um, so uh, obviously, the study shows that the PCR rate is increased, but uh, we don't know whether the disease for survival or overall survival is, is increased. Um, uh, given the results from uh, the recent adjuvant trials with bevacizumab, uh, it is thought maybe that bevacizumab will not really move si significantly forward in the earlier settings, but it's out there. And the role of carboplatin uh, needs to be really evaluated in definitive studies. It's more active in BRCA-positive patients, but in the BRCA-ness, it has to be looked at. Um, the bevacizumab uh, story I mentioned a little bit. Uh, Preclinical data suggests that um, that triple negative breast cancer might be susceptible to anti-angiogenic anti therapy. And here are the studies in the metastatic setting that whenever bevacizumab is added, the response rate increases to standard chemo, but again, without translation into overall survival benefit. In the neoadjuvant setting, uh, again, adding bevacizumab has some improvement in PCR and not in some, some other studies, but in the adjuvant setting, there is no disease for survival benefit, as uh, reported recently in the Beatrice and um, 
E5103 study. So, bevacizumab, it, practical conclusions is really in a metastatic setting. If your endpoint is to increase response rate, I think you can use it. But in the neadjuvant and adjuvant setting, without a documented disease fear and overall survival, uh, I think it's, it will be hard to justify. Very briefly about PARP inhibitors. Um, obviously, uh, PARP inhibitors are involved in DNA repair, and if you especially use it in BRCA deficient patients, you induce cell that because you block HR as well as the uh, base excision repair. Um, in mutation carriers, it appears that the response rate is about 40% uh, based on these uh, early uh, phase one, phase two studies, and it's now being studied in phase three studies. But the effect is not seen in BRC negatives, just BRC positive, unlike in ovarian cancer. Um, so uh, there are, uh, uh, are molecular uh, markers uh, we are trying to identify to see if uh, the HRD score can help uh, identify which agents in which population might be helpful. So, um, so what is next for triple negative breast cancer? I think we have to identify the subtypes. Uh, these are some of the targets and agents that are being studied, but nothing is standard of care. So in conclusion, I can say that triple negative breast cancer is a heterogeneous disease. For stage four disease, I think at the time, standard of care would be um, first line uh, taxanes, uh, platinums are appropriate, second lines, erubilin, and other options. In the neadjuvant setting, platinums, there is some added toxicity, but the PCR rate is increased. We have to see whether the disease for survival is increased. I think one important question for triple negative breast cancer is after neadjuvant systemic therapy, the issue about residual disease. And there is a study, EA1131, it's an ECOG study, looking at the uh, platinums after neadjuvant chemotherapy with androcyclines and taxanes. And uh, the treatment for BRCA1 germline mutation carriers might be actually different. More platinums and the PARP inhibitors are definitely effective. And uh, as I mentioned, because of the uh, multiple subtypes of triple negative breast cancer and the exciting targets and agents available, we are awaiting results of those studies. So thank you so much for giving me two extra minutes. <laughs> thank you, Professor Dr. Rebano, for this excellent and comprehensive presentation. Thank you very much. Our next speaker now is Professor Hamja Abdul Azim. Professor Hamja Abdul Azim is former head of the department at Nemrook Cairo University uh, Department, and he is a very well known, eminent professor and international speaker. Professor Hamja